Hello and welcome to the channel. My name is Vijay and I am a Microsoft MVP in SharePoint. In today's video, we are going to discuss about how we can use Fluent UI React drop-down control in a SPFX web part. So basically, we will create a SPFX client-side web part and then we will see how we can use this React drop-down control in that. So if I will just run and show the uh, the functionality how it is working then I have already created a project you can see here this already the solution will build from the scratch but let me just run and show you what is the functionality that we are going to develop here. Now if you look at uh, this is what the kind of screen or the web part that we are going to develop you can see here there is a single select drop down and multi select drop down this thing we will run and we will see it. So I will just run golf serve and this is the uh, you can see here this is the SPFX call solution and we will add into our SharePoint workbench you can see here this is the local workbench and while the uh, local workbench is running you can see here I have opened the um, SharePoint workbench for this particular site and here I will add the web part so if I will search for fluent uh, then you can see here fluent UI drop down this is the web part name and here you can see this this is a single selection drop down that means I can select a single value from here and this is a multi select drop down you can see here let's say I'll select power BI and teams and then I'll click on submit you can see here submitted successfully that means the data is saving to a particular SharePoint list now look at this list you can see here this is the list and this last one is the item that we have added now for the title column just I am adding one uh, GUID or the GUID you can have a control you can add the values. Now the intention of this post here is we will see how we can use this uh, react uh, drop down uh, and that is with the fluent UI react drop down. And if you are new to this then I have already um, have a video on what is fluent UI how we can use that. I will put the link in the video description you can have a look at that. Now if I will show you the official document here you can search for Fluent UI or React and then you will you will be able to come up with here uh, the, this is the official Fluent UI site and here this is the drop down control you can see and there are various uh, examples are there you can have a look at that. Uh, here I have taken a basic example and then we will see how we can use it. Now for that first of all we required a uh, required one a list where the value will be saved and also if i will if you if i'll show you this options whatever uh, is it is selected for example let's me just refresh the page once and by default you can see here there is a single uh, drop down and it has the values over here and the same thing you can see here here also the values are there this values i have not hard coded this as these values are there from this particular list now the single value drop down and multi value drop down these are coming from or these are two choice columns so if I will just edit this you can see here this is a choice column and these are the choices and these values are binding to this control and the second one the multi value uh, drop down you can see here these are values and these values are uh, binding to this particular second one multi select drop down control now that means we will I will show you how we can bind this and for this we are going to use PNP also to get the data and on submit of that uh, submit of the click button uh, I will show you how we can save this that is again we are using PNP for that. Now what we will do here is we will create a project from the scratch and then I will uh, um, then then we will see what are the things that are required to install. I have already created a blog post also for the same. You can follow the blog and then you can step by step follow and then you can also download the solution there. So I'll put the link in the video description. The blog is already ready and I have already published that. So I'll put that link in the video description. Now what I'll do is I'll go to node.js. I'll open the node.js command prompt. You can see here I'll just run as administrator and here we will I have a folder D drive. So I'll go to SPFX. This is the folder where I put all this uh, uh, solutions and you can have your folder where you want to create it now I'll create a subfolder so fluent UI drop down uh, let's say example and the same thing I'll navigate to that folder fluent UI drop down example you can see here we are in this particular folder now so I'll run the command Microsoft slash 
uh, SharePoint. I'll also put a link for uh, how to create a SPFX client side web part in case you are a very beginner to that. I have explained how to set up this and then how you can uh, uh, create a, a, a project for that. And next you can see here, I'll give a name for that. So this is the name for the solution and then we are targeting SharePoint online only. Use the current folder, we don't require this and this also. And next thing is, we are going to create a web part for this. Uh, select it and then it is asking us what will be the web part name. So you can give anything, let's say I will give Fluent uh, UI drop down. And then the description it will take automatically this way and then I'll select the react here you can see here the framework I am selecting here react then click on enter so what it will do now is it will it will take some time and then it will create our solution uh, the SPFX call solution after that we will run couple of commands so that we can uh, install the fluent UI react controls so that we can use it at the same time I'll also run the command for PNP now meanwhile if you are interested for SharePoint training, I have a complete SharePoint training course model here. 20 hour, 25 plus hours of, you know, videos are there. It it has also source code, uh, you know, PDFs uh, solutions are there which you can download and you can test it. I have already, uh, you know, uh, modulized. I have explained what are the things are there in this particular course, and you can have a look at all these things. There are uh, 10 modules on that. Uh, I'll put the link in the video description in case you, you are interested you can have a look at that. Let me just show you what is the progress here you can see here it will take some time and I'll back soon. So you can see here our project got created. Next thing is we need to install the uh, Fluent UI React controls for that uh, npm install then at the rate Fluent UI slash react so it will take some time and then it will install uh, it will install this so that we can use the react controls fluent UI react controls on that and once this will complete then what we'll do is we will install the pnp one so that the code that we are going to use to communicate with sharepoint like to save the data or to read the choices uh, values from the list columns and bind it in bind it into the uh, drop down so all these things we will uh, uh, we will use here in pnp now next thing is you can see here that is completed so npm i and at the rate pnp slash sp so you can see here so now it will take some time and then our installation will over so everything is by this time every installation is over uh, so next uh, what we will do is we will run the code uh, space dot command so that we can open that solution using visual studio code so let me just open it here let it first complete so you can see here our npm uh, this one is done pnp has been installed now so next thing what i'll do here is i will open the solution using code dot uh, you can see here now this is our solution uh, now we have two very important files here so if i will expand src then you can see here web part dot ts file and in, our, in the component we have the component file now these two are important files where we are going to write our code here uh, now what i have done is i have already uh, explained you the, the code i have already uh, told you that there is a solution which is there so what i will do here is i will open that solution so you can see here this is the solution and uh, i will show you uh, what are the things exactly you need to in you need to add it uh, i don't want to write all these things now because already uh, i don't want to make this one uh, too much big this video uh, but i have already put this link in the video description where you can download the entire project so you can just uh, once you download unzip it and then you run npmi and then you'll be able to see this uh, this code everything you'll get it there now two things we will do explain here one thing is the uh, in the web part dot ts file in this file if you'll see here uh, i have a method which is uh, get choice fields so what we are doing here is as i said we are binding the choices from the choice column so uh, if i will open here so if you will see there is uh, two choice columns are there you can see here this values we are reading it and then we are binding into uh, the 
drop down so here it is so you can see here i am using this rest call this is the list name and then the uh, property name so whatever the property we are uh, you can see here this is the code so we are calling the single value drop down this is the column name and multi value drop down this is the column name so we are passing the web absolute url and the column name so that we can do the rest call and then you can see here uh, here we are we are getting all the choices here you can see here data value dot choices so whatever the choices are there we are adding into that result array so then it is returning so you can see here the array is returning so the single value options and multi value options now we are we are using it if you look at here this is our tsx file or the component file so here first of all we are using import statement so that we can use it and then these are the import statement for pnp now though if i'll show you the render method you can see here here is the drop down so drop down and then the placeholder so that you will be able to see the text whatever it is appearing and then the options so these options these dot props dot single value options which we are getting it over here now uh, this is what we are uh, uh, binding here and the same thing multi value the props dot multi value options now these are the things that we are uh, getting it here so that the values will be bind from here and then uh, on the change drop down multi change and then on change drop down a change so this is for single thing so you can see here again we are uh, on the whatever you are selecting then set state we are doing on the single value drop down uh, where we have only one value so that's the reason i have taken a string one and then it is an array so the second one if you'll see here uh, multi value uh, drop down so that user can select multiple things so that's the reason we are putting everything into that particular array and then finally uh, we are saving the values so you can see here uh, web dot list dot get by title this is our list name items dot add and then title uh, single value and title the guid as i said and that is the reason every time i am saving there is a guid is saving here and uh, then single value drop down the values and then multi value drop down the uh, results from that particular state multi uh, value drop down and then finally it will show an alert now this is what um, this is what or how it will work when you will uh, when you will uh, uh, use this or when you will use this code uh, you will be able to save it now to run it as i al already explained you uh, so basically you can go here you will be able to run the local workbench gulp serve and then it will open that uh, and you can add this web part to your sharepoint workbench like this and then you can save and then the value will be saved once you click on submit so this is how you can work with the drop down uh, react uh, fluent ui control and in case you want to let's say you want to deploy it uh, or you want to create a package so that uh, so that you can put it in in the app catalog site for other site collection to use it uh, now you can run the commands so so you can see these are the commands gulp bundle hyphen hyphen ship and then gulp package solution hyphen hyphen ship once you run these commands uh, then uh, it will create uh, it will create one here uh, in this under the SharePoint the package is there you can see simply you can drag the you can open this uh, let's say I'll just open it reveal in file explorer you can see here solution this is our dot spp kg file and when you you can upload you can just drag and drop into the uh, folder in into the uh, list in in the uh, in your uh, app catalog site whether it is site collection app, app catalog or your uh, tenant app catalog so you can add that and then that web part anyone can use it uh, you don't need to uh, run locally and then gulp server and use that so this is how we can uh, work with uh, the fluent ui drop down control in spfx client side web part and if you want similar kind of videos then subscribe to our youtube channel you'll get free videos on office 365 sharepoint online spfx power platform all these videos you will get it free thank you and have a nice day